When I started this channel, I had no equipment, no idea on how to record or write anything, just an old DSLR camera and a bunch of my own hiking and bushcraft gear. The video I made and uploaded, funnily enough, is one of my most viewed videos, but it's seriously cringeworthy. It's just that bad. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Bushnell H2O 10x42 waterproof binoculars. But it makes me see how far the channel has come and it made me want to do an updated two year usage review. So let's get to it. G'day all, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to this updated look at the waterproof binoculars from Bushnell, the 10x42 H2Os. Now, if you're new to the channel, we're all about everything outdoors. We do product reviews with a cheeky giveaway every now and then, and when family commitments let me, the odd outdoor survival trip as well. So if you're interested in joining me on this adventure, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you do, don't miss out on any of our content as it gets released. So firstly, a little bit about Bushnell, who are they? Bushnell started out over 65 years ago and their guiding principle was to provide the highest quality, most reliable and affordable sports optics on the market. They have a huge range of binoculars available for every possible use. They offer range finders for your sporting enthusiasts and rifle scopes for your avid sports person or game hunter. And more recently, they've released a series of trail cameras and tactical vision equipment. So before we take a look at the H2Os themselves, there's a couple of things that I think you should consider before you buy a set of binoculars. Firstly, what are you gonna be using them for? I mean, for example, are you going to be bird watching, maybe game spotting, sports shooting, orienteering, or maybe you just wanna get a closer look at nature when you're out hiking? This will really narrow down the selection if you can pinpoint one thing or another. Secondly, how are you gonna carry them? There's no point in having a huge big set of bulky binoculars if you're an ultralight backpacker setting out on a, a multi-night wild camp. So in this case, size really does matter. And lastly, what sort of zoom do you need? And this somewhat relates back to the first question. I mean, orienteering, you're not going to necessarily need a large zoom if you're scouting out a really large area. If you're searching for skittish wildlife, on the other hand, then zoom is going to be more appropriate to get that detail that you're after. And this leads us into a question that some of you will already know, but if you're looking for your first set of binoculars, you may not. And that is, how does the zoom affect the field of view? Well, generally speaking, when using a pair of binoculars, you put your eyes up to the little ends and point the big end towards the object or area that you want to get a closer look at. Yeah. <gasps> the old man is so tiny. Can you see that? <laughs> What's his name? You're so tiny. No, you're not. No, you are. No, you're not. No, you are. No, you're not. No, you are. No, you're not. Tiny, big, tiny. She is a... <laughs> Adorable. She is, I'm lucky. The area that you see through the viewfinder is called the field of view. The field of view is measured at an industry standard 1,000 yards, and what you can see through the lens at a maximum zoom from side to side is your field of view. So this means that the lower the magnification gives you a wider field of view, and if you didn't put two and two together, the higher the magnification, the narrower the field of view. If you're looking to take in nature and all its surroundings, a lower zoom is the way to go. If you need to get a closer look at the animal for whatever reason, you'll need to bump up the zoom, which will lose some of the surroundings. Now there are three main body sizes. Compact bodies that have lenses generally under 30 mil. Mid-size, which generally has lenses typically between 30 and 40, although the H2O breaks this trend and jams a 42 mil lens into a mid-size body. And then there's the granddaddies, the full-size binoculars. And these bad boys can come up to as large as 80 millimeters. With so many different brands out there offering so many variations, there's a set to suit pretty much every single need. Now, the H2Os give you an overall field of view of 102 meters at that standard 1,000 yards, which is around about 915 meters, but near enough to a kilometer. 
So now we've covered the nitty gritties, let's go over some of the particulars on the Bushnell H2Os. The overall size of the binoculars, they're 13 centimetres square and a little over six centimetres high at their highest point when they're fully extended on a flat surface. They're basically the same size as a one litre army style canister. They weigh a fraction over 700 grams, so they're not super light. I actually had these stashed away in the front pocket of a backpack that I took out on a family hike. Never realized that they were actually there until we stopped to grab a drink. So they're light enough to not really know that they're even there. Lens size we've touched on at 42 millimeters with a 10 times magnification. These are 100% waterproof, fog proof, splash proof. I've tried and tested this over the last couple of years with a couple of accidental slips into some puddles and some streams, and they've come out perfectly fine. The rubber body all around is textured, so it does make them really, really easy to handle in rain, hail, or shine. And the oversized zoom knob in the center, it makes it really, really easy to get a hold of, even with oversized gloves on like snow gloves. The eye caps themselves, this feature I really like on binoculars. If you wear glasses like I do, the, the re retracting eye pieces, they actually make it so that the lenses on your glasses don't actually touch the eye piece when you're, when you're looking through them. So really, really handy. They come with rubber caps to protect the eyepieces and the lenses so that you can keep them protected while you're traveling and a padded neck strap as well, which comes so that if you're carrying them for extended periods of time, uh, it, it, they are nice and comfortable. Overall, there's a pretty versatile set of binoculars, fully waterproof, 10 by 42, so you get a really nice field of view through them as well. Now, these are by no means a high-end set of binoculars with the highest quality lenses in them and whatnot. They're designed to be functional and affordable enough for everyone to use. Now, after two years of use, I still recommend these for your everyday hiker and first-time user. They're good enough to get you closer look at details on nature when you're out there, but affordable enough that you don't have to be really cautious with them when you're out using them. Yet they're compact, they're powerful, they're waterproof, durable. That's a really lengthy, but the best way to summarize the 10x42s from Bushmel. But there's always a but. If you're a serious wildlife watcher, I would probably recommend going with a more premium model like the Nitro 10x42. The lenses are much, much better. They're made for different light conditions, which in my opinion is a better way to go if you're into that avid wildlife watching. But it does come with a price tag. So it really does all come down to how much you can afford. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed the updated review and look at the Bushnell 10x42 binoculars. If you're interested in this type of content, please on your way out, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can keep up to date with all of our content as we upload it. And that's it for this one. Thanks again for watching. Until the next one, we'll see you then. Cheers guys.